It has now been almost a month since I took it upon myself to switch my daily driver from Windows over to Linux. In today's video I want to talk about my experiences I had with my Debian install, over the course of this time span and what I think can be improved. Now this might seem like a rant video at first, but trust me, it's not. There are many things that can and need to be improved and I will be critical in this regard. I mean, how are things going to change otherwise? All right, so now that that's out of the way, let's move on. Since my channel does not really have a full focus on Linux right now, I wanted to ask, well, you, if you want to see more Linux content, so please make sure to like the video and comment down below what you want to see from me. Otherwise, there will be at least one Linux video per month with news, updates, my experiences, you know, what comes up. All right, so let's start with the first point I want to talk about today. That being you. My last two Linux videos received a lot of feedback and discussion topics and they were fun to read. Thanks for your engagement on that. I really appreciate it. According to you, you really liked my regular take on Linux. The out of the box experience, so to speak. But what I also noticed was the fragmentation even carried over to my channel. I mean, the variety of Linux distributions you guys use is insane. We're talking about Linux Mint, Garuda, Mancharo, Fedora, Arch, PopOS, Ubuntu, MX Linux, KDE Neon, Debian, just to name a few. I mean, I've already talked about fragmentation and why I think it's a bad idea. Instead of solving problems together, some people just fix it for themselves and then they think, oh yeah, let's make an own distribution. Eh. Now, as long as it's based off a main distribution, it's not that of an issue. But if that fragmentation continues down the line, then you make a clone of a clone of a clone, maybe alternate some things and suddenly all the dependencies are just all over the place. But hey, there's a solution, right? Flatpak, Snaps and the Arch user repository short or? Don't quote me on that one. While they are here to solve some of the compatibility issues, there are still many more. Flatback. Well, a neat little way to install applications has a lot of problems due to its sandboxing style. I've already covered one problem I had with OBS back in my first Linux video, but the main thing I've had issues with was accessing my directories. Discord, for example, does not have access to the home directory by default or any of my other drives. So what I had to do was install flat seal, crack open the sandbox and give permission to use those directories. The same applies to Steam by the way. That is, if you were to install the Flatback version. If you do so, then even Lutris won't recognize Steam. So yeah, if you're going to use Steam, then you're just better off downloading it from the official website. Things like that are not really hard to solve, but that extra step is necessary. And it is questionable why these permissions are not set in the first place. Another thing is the NVIDIA driver. This is partially my fault, but I installed a bleeding edge driver, which was not yet available in Flatpak. So my applications just wouldn't start because the driver inside Flatpak was still missing. So to sum this up, Flatpak has some issues that you need to be aware of. And it can suck in many cases. During a short period of time, like five to six hours. I also tried Mancharo and man, the software store sucks. I think it's called Pamek. Holy moly, I had such a hard time navigating through this mess. And even if you enable Flatpak and R support, the usability is just so bad. Of course, I could have just used the terminal, but this is not what my channel tries to achieve. I want newcomers to stay the heck away from the terminal. It can be frustrating and not intuitive whatsoever if you're not even interested in computers. Okay, now this accounts for all developers working on desktop environments. Take a look at the Microsoft Store for Windows. People think it's bad. Now let's compare it to GNOME, KDE or even Mancharo. Yeah. You see the problem? I'm not saying these stores are bad, except maybe Pamek, but usability and visuals are essential for a store to be accepted. Oh, I almost forgot. Remember when I said I tried to switch to Mancharo? So why didn't I? Okay, let's see. So DaVinci Resolve didn't work. It just did not. It didn't matter if it was the Arch user repository build or the official version from the website. The application just wouldn't open. Even if you tried to launch it through the terminal, it just didn't spit out any errors. So it seemed to be working, but nothing happened. So I have no idea what's going on with that. But that wasn't the main reason. The main reason for me personally was secure boot. 
I know, I know, people are getting mad at Microsoft for implementing this in the first place. However, you cannot neglect it. Personally, I need Secure Boot to work on Windows for Valorant and face it. And I don't want to enable it in the UEFI every time I boot into Windows. So choosing a Linux distribution that works with Secure Boot is essential for me. And while I know that you can make Mancharo work with Secure Boot by signing the kernel and whatsoever, it involves a lot of tinkering, which I'm not really willing to do. Because if there comes a new update along, then uh, here we go again, I guess. It is a pain to do that with the NVIDIA trial whenever a new kernel update comes along, so. Okay, let's talk about something else. And I want your opinion on this. Do you want Microsoft products on Linux? I'm talking natively. That could be the Office Suite, but also the Xbox app. I'm asking you this because I found that there are two major groups in Linux. One that really wants these tools on Linux, they say, yeah, it's a great idea. It not only helps by bringing more people over, but it just works better between platforms. But then there is the other half, which says, no, proprietary. Proprietary bad. Linux is only about open source and you should just switch to open source instead of installing Microsoft Office whatsoever. Now. Here's my take on this. Personally, I want Microsoft products on Linux. Not because of their software necessarily, but because of their online integrations. During the last weeks, I had to write several documents in cooperation with some other students. But it wasn't that easy on Linux, since the online version of Word, for example, was lacking a lot of features, like references. Also, some of the styles were just broken and especially in PowerPoint, sometimes the margins were not quite right. The solution to that was always just open it locally on your PC, while also maintaining the working together functionalities. But Microsoft Office does not work natively on Linux, so I just used my Microsoft Surface to get the job done. This is a real issue, and it's only going to get worse. We're currently living in a world where Literally every company that offers software solutions is trying to get their products into the cloud. Which means that for now, we just have to rely on hybrid solutions, which bring the best of both worlds. But these hybrid solutions just don't work on Linux if the core application is not available, especially when working together with Windows or Mac users. But you know what? I can live with that. So enough negativity for today. Let's talk about the things that I'm looking forward to. Number one, Xbox Game Pass. Even though Microsoft only offers their xCloud in combination with Game Pass Ultimate right now, the fact that they reacted so fast with the release of the Steam Deck proves that Microsoft is definitely interested in that platform. They didn't have to. The community would have figured a way out because Edge is available on Linux. I'm not sure if that holds true for Arch, but on Debian-based distributions, it is already here. I really hope that Microsoft brings their Game Pass to the Steam Deck natively as well. And to be honest, it's not that far off. There are Xbox games running on the Nintendo Switch, for example. Microsoft as a company, especially in the gaming space, wants to make their games available on every single platform. And I really want them to. I'm using the Game Pass because it is a really valuable way to just enjoy video games. I mean, two AAA titles are more expensive than the Game Pass over a whole year. And I know that if it weren't for the Game Pass, I probably would spend more money than that because I really like new releases and games. Another thing I'm really hoping that is happening soon is a better Nvidia settings application. Now, even though the Steam Deck does not have anything to do with Nvidia, it could finally give Linux a push in the gaming world in general. I want a similar or even better interface to change my Nvidia graphics settings, because the current one is just really, really bad. It features not even a close variety of settings that you can tweak on Linux. I think DLSS is one of them. I am not entirely sure though if you can tweak that. But most of the settings that work on Windows do work on Linux, you just cannot tweak them. Let's see what Nvidia makes of this. Bungie and Destiny 2. <sighs> My arch nemesis right now. Come on guys, work out a solution for your bad actors problem. Just enable Linux support in your anti-cheat software and we're good to go. It is really not that hard. And Linux is also just a minority in gaming in general. So yeah. What I really enjoy about playing my games on Linux is the increase in FPS. I'm in an older car. A GTX 1080 to be precise. And Linux for some reason just gives me slightly more FPS than Windows. Even though there is an extra Proton layer between. Just imagine if games just wouldn't even need Proton. They're just optimized for Vulkan natively. Yeah, that would be really nice. I was actually wondering if open source is the future of gaming related APIs. I mean, 
DirectX, for example, works on Windows and Xbox, but not really on PlayStation and Nintendo Switch. They, of course, have their own custom solutions. So why not build one big API together? The porting of games would then become basically effortlessly? I really hope this happens one day, because it would make sense. So to sum it up, the first month of using Linux as my daily driver, how was it? Well, boot and shutdown times are much quicker than Windows, if you neglect my dual boot grub 5 seconds delay. Besides having some game compatibility issues, namely Destiny 2 and Valorant, I enjoyed playing Witcher 3 without any hiccups whatsoever. I also played CSGO with my mates over Discord, and it was working just fine. CSGO, however, is the only game that seems to run slightly worse, at least for me, especially on new maps. This could be due to the Linux version using OpenGL instead of DirectX, like on Windows. However, Valve has already added experimental Vulkan support, so let's see how this develops. I was also able to enjoy my Netflix and Amazon Prime shows, even though Amazon Prime limits the quality to SD on Linux. There was a time when Linux just didn't work in general due to compatibility issues with codecs and algorithms that are in place to prevent illegal copying of the content. But this got resolved already, and the only reason why Amazon doesn't provide HD quality content is because they choose to. Let's see how long this takes to fix. And yeah, I think that's about it. I'm done! So if you've liked this video, then make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Also make sure to leave a comment if you have any questions or just like to discuss some topics. I'm looking forward to chat with you a bit. You should also check out my last video about gaming on Linux. And without any further ado, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around.